Good evening, guys. Good morning. Good afternoon. Whenever you are going to be listening to this goddamn thing, welcome back to another episode of For the Love of Oats with us, your hosts, as per usual, me and him. Hi, him. Richardson. <laughs> it's time for <laughs> for the love of oats. Anyway, on uh, this second edition of the no, it's not a second edition, is it? Really, this is our fourth. fourth? Episode. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Fourth episode. What I'm trying to say is in between each of mine and Jack's episode, we tend to tend to invite somebody else on. And uh, we've decided today to invite some little twerp on who everybody loves because we love him as well. Um, and it is by the man of Mr. George Osley. Hello, George sir. Boy. How are you? Hello. Thank you very much for having me on. I never get invited on podcasts, so it's always uh, a special a special thing for me. Obviously, I do mine with AJ at the moment, but I never actually get invited on uh, other podcasts. So it's good to kind of be on something different instead of the kind of usual stuff that we, we me and AJ normally do. Um, so no, it. thank so you. No I'm all good. There's no, no pressure, pressure here. You have got to perform, <laughs> you know, optimally. So. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to do it right. But anyway, so um, let's just have a bit of a catch up, realistically. So, Jack, have you finished shoveling those anabolic chippies into your mouth just yet, or what? It's Jack's just sat there, like, literally with a trough, <laughs> spooning in anabolic chippies in his immensely small shirt <laughs> that he's wearing. I know. I'm <laughs> extremely tight. Extra medium today. <laughs> extra medium. <Damn. laughs> There's a first like, Jack, t-shirt out. What's going on? It's not my girlfriend's at all. No, of course not. <laughs> he would make that look even smaller. <laughs> Small. But yeah, anyway, right, this week, what's been going on? Um, this week, I've been training on my own for um, the best part of it because Vicky's decided she doesn't want to train this week. No, not this week. She couldn't be asked. Um, yeah. So... Yeah, um, just been training, getting my strength back. It's it's pretty much had quite nice increases this week, so um, that's gone quite smoothly. Um, went out for a curry on Tuesday, which brought me back to leaky bum stage. But dude, you don't learn. You don't learn. I know, man. But it was a hand out of curry in such a while. The number. <laughs> Sorry. Can I just interrupt quickly? Um, I remember you saying about obviously the uh, the poos that you had, and then the next day or when it went, the next day you kind of have eight. What was it Weetabix or something like that? <laughs> I was thinking if I had eight Weetabix, I would be back on that toilet for the rest of the day. It was well, a good idea. Yeah, was a good man. idea at all, man. Um, yeah. How I, many was I, it, by the way? Was it eight? Yeah, it was eight. The, uh, oh my god! When I first had what I had. The day before, I had 10 Weetabix, and then that happened. I was like, wow, okay, um, this is the 10 Weetabix. And then it happened for the, throughout the whole week. I was like, okay, this is something else. So I, I thought I'd be safe with the Weetabix, and then it just turned out I shouldn't have done that at all. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, all fiber. I'm firing solids at the moment, so that's all good. All right, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> Right, well, enough about that then. Um, a little bit of a catch up on me. Yeah, I'm not training this week. Um, I just can't be asked. I've had enough of it. So I just thought, you know what? I'm just going to take an immense deload, um, eat all of the food, make even more gains from not training and recovering like a boss. Um, and then just basically get back to it on Monday. So that's what I do. But no, the reason why I'm taking a week off, um, or not really a week off, like that's half a month. That's, yeah, that's ridiculous. And the reason why I'm taking some time off is just because I am extremely fatigued. Um, sleep is being affected. My appetite is always ravenous, but for some unknown reason, I was getting full really quickly. Um, some other issues were going on medically wise, and I just kind of thought, you know what, it's probably not the best thing. The other thing was, is that I was making really, really good performance gains in the gym, because even Jack was like, right, what steroids are you on? Because I was like leaping up on like 10 kilos or something each lift, wasn't I? It was just ridiculous. Yeah, it was a bit silly. It was. It was. Maybe but, it's bad because you were. But that particular me. one, <laughs> <laughs> that one session, it was it was a a big increase. But I was like, fuck, that was heavy. 
Yeah. And I was, I was like completely dead. So decided to take some time off, relax, recover, um, and just make Jack miss me even more than he does so anyway. So, and it's working. It's working well in mm. every realm. Mm. So that's me and Jack. So George, tell us a little bit about you, love. If people do not know who you are, just give us a bit of an intro to you, why we brought you on and what you've been up to. So, oh God, I don't know where to start. So I, I would say I'm a, I guess, a YouTuber, influencer sort of thing. Um, currently a natural bodybuilder who competed for the first time last year or la yeah, the season last year. And um, I also online coach as a, as a full-time job currently right now. Uh, what else can I say about me? I don't know. I don't know what else to say about me. I'm quite boring when it comes to it. I just eat, train, sleep, work. Repeat all, mate. Just a typical, all. just a typical I, boring lifestyle that we're kind of sure. but... People are like, what do you do <laughs> apart from train? I like sleep. <laughs> yeah, spend sleep. some time with the missus, go for a walk here and there, um, eat food, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Well, um, if, if you aren't following so, George already on YouTube, please do. He's he's very funny. <laughs> he's got a great YouTube. I'm, I think I'm just that type of person that just kind of says it how it is and can be quite relatable because I started YouTube when I was at university and I, uh, I was thinking, right, well, what, what is there missing on YouTube that I can kind of fill the gaps? And at the time, obviously I was a student and I was thinking, right, student budget. I was thinking there's not a lot of stuff on here being a bodybuilder at university. And of course I started doing the, the food shopping videos, the full days of eating on a student budget and started to gain a bit of a following. And it, I think it was quite refreshing for people who were on a budget, who were at uni, that could, they could relate to my content and actually feel like, hang on, I'm not the only one that's suffering on like a pound a day or whatever it may potentially be. I can actually, you know, you know I don't know if anyone's been in experiences where, despite obviously it being quite negative, other people can relate to it and it starts to make you feel slightly better about the situation yeah. despite obviously it being quite bad. Um, and I think people got that a lot from my content, hence why I am probably in the position I am now where, you know, I can not, not YouTube in full time, but I can say that's a part of my income now, um, luckily. So I, it started there really when I, when I did YouTube and just kept on posting. Um, and then people were going to tell me you can compete one day. And I was thinking, oh, I don't want to compete. I'm not interested in that. Um, and then it got to like late 2018 when I actually made the, my decision and I was thinking, actually, I want to compete. I want to see where I'm at in terms of that. And then obviously early 2019 is when I started, um, my prep in, in January. And then I'm here now, uh, a lot healthier, a lot happier and, uh, yeah, a lot fatter as well at the same time. And <laughs> yeah. a lot fatter. Wonderful. Yeah. We like being fat sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes fat of is course. healthy. It's good. <laughs> Okay, so I know that um, Jack wanted to talk to you about a couple of um, things that he had going on in his head, but I'll start it off by saying you mentioned um, in, your, in your little kind of like biography that you just did there, um, that you are currently a natural bodybuilder. Yeah. And I think this is what Jack wanted to talk to you a little bit more about from there. So you're having some thoughts about um, potentially not being um, a natural bodybuilder anymore. Yeah. Um, so I've, I've always like looked up to the big guys. Um, don't get me wrong. I love natural bodybuilding. I love the commitments and I know what it takes to get in shape to be on stage. And it's, you know, it's, it's crazy. We all know what it's like. Um, however, I, I, my goals are bigger than that. Like I don't want to be a natural bodybuilder. I want to be th the best. I, I, my goals outweigh natural bodybuilding, unfortunately. And I don't have the patience. I don't want to be doing bodybuilding when I'm 50 or 60, I don't care about it. I want to get the most out of it when I can and then finish off and just go to the gym, you know, like three times a week and just enjoy it instead of log booking my stuff, you know, having to eat as much as what I do and worry about all this stuff, which I didn't worry about when I was younger and just go back to enjoying it and just live a more healthier lifestyle. But I'm quite extreme with my approaches and I, I got to a point now where when I went on stage last year, it made me realize how far behind I am in terms of my overall goal. And I, had, I thought to myself, right, I'm, I'm going to have to finally make the, It's just making that step forward. Um, once I've started that side of things, I'm fine. It's just making that decision and know, right, if I'm making this decision, this is going to be a commitment. This is potentially going to change my life. Yeah. Um, you know, going to take a few years off my life as well, potentially as well come with uh, some few health risks it's just weighing all of that up and then going hang on let's do this and then once mm -hmm. i'm there i'm there 
Um, yeah. But like I said, my, my goals outweigh natural bodybuilding. And that's no dis- disrespect to anyone who's natural because I love it. I'll still go to the natural shows each year. You know, I'll still watch the local shows, whatever it may be. But I, I want to be bigger than that. I want to be just, yeah, pretty much. My goals are way bigger than natural bodybuilding, unfortunately. Yeah. So you, you say you want to get to a point where in the future where you want to, where you're just training a few days a week and, you know, the, you have a more relaxed approach. Uh, yeah. You could just enjoy things outside of training. Mm. Uh, what makes you want to go all in on bodybuilding now? It's just, it's just like, I don't know. I just feel like with everything in life, I'm, I'm like that. Like I'd rather... I'm young. I'm still 22. I can, you know, I, I, I'm, my responsibilities right now are low. Um, they're not as low as what they used to be when I was younger. And I feel like right now, if I can really work towards, you know, building a brand, building a business, you know, trying to do something for myself, then I'd rather do that now than regretting like I'm 50 and I'm, you know, having to be in a dead end job or I'm having to really work extremely hard just to get a bit of an income so I can save when I'm older. I would rather work my bollocks off now and make my make make a living make me be where i need to be and then later on in life i can kind of slowly taper that off and just you know relax and go back to enjoying the gym and don't worry, i still enjoy the gym regardless yeah. but i want i don't yeah. want to be log booking my sessions and thinking oh, i'm 2.5 kilos down today on my hack squat you know i don't yeah. want to be doing that at the age of 50 i want to be just going in getting a sweat feeling good um that mm. type of stuff i don't really yeah, want to be doing that yeah yeah Thing. You want to grind it out once you're young and then you know, yeah sit on of course because like, like like i said I'm, I'm young responsibilities i don't have no children i don't i still live at home at the moment you know i want to be able to maximize everything i can on myself uh, my own investment and then when it comes to the time to move out and all that type of stuff i can say look i can move out now because i've, I've worked extremely hard um i'm in a position where i can take that next step if that makes sense so yeah off, is, off the back of that, do you think that being a successful bodybuilder is going to give you even more success as a business? Mm, I think it's difficult. I think since competing, my business went a sky high. Like the amount of clients I, I received, my you know, YouTube videos and views and likes on Instagram just went crazy sky high. Obviously, it's just a lot different. It's not a lot different, but I don't get as many views. Uh, my likes on instagram and stuff like that and not as high as what they used to be on prep however i'm still each year taking that step forward um and i do believe when i looked my best in terms of being on prep and stuff like that my inquiry was just left right and center i was earning more money I'm not saying i'm not earning as much but i was in a position like well okay like this is quite overwhelming at times like i, I didn't realize how much i was making so i do believe yeah like it can you know, your success or business successes can be dictated by the way you look for sure. Like if I didn't look, if I didn't compete last year, I wouldn't be in the position I am this year or going into 2020, I should say, um, mm. where I'm in a really good position. Um, so yeah, I definitely do. But I'm not saying I'm, I'm taking steroids for, you know, to be successful in business and stuff like that. Cause I still probably can do very well in natural bodybuilding if I kept going for it. But like I said, to begin with, my goal was just outweigh natural bodybuilding. I don't want to be, I want to be that big fucking bloke that, walks around down the down the street and everyone's pointing and look at that bloke i want to i want to sort of be that bloke i don't want to be the geezer like, oh you, you look natural in a t-shirt sort of thing and then when you take your gear off you're like wow actually you didn't i didn't realize you look like that sort of yeah thing. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Um, i don't want to be wearing you know size small t-shirts <laughs> nothing wrong with size small <laughs> when i was on prep it was an issue i was like wow i'm walking around <laughs> i wear size small all the time but i look big <laughs> That t-shirt's yeah. not that small. Mm. Yeah, um, yeah. Jack just wears small anyway, <laughs> whether they fit or not. <laughs> um, so, when, if you were to make that jump, um, if and when, what class would it be that you are aiming to get into? Or the bodybuilding class? See, I don't know. I would love to be. I, obviously, I, I definitely wouldn't be an open bodybuilder. I'm, I'm too small too small for it um i'm not the classic at all like i know that you've gone you're, you're pursuing the classic look I, i'm not that type of individual i'm too narrow um i don't have like standout lats or muscle bellies which go wow he's he's got a classic physique i really don't know in all honesty um i would love to be a 212 open bodybuilder sort of like that 
Um, that would be my overall goal. But I, I don't know. I'll see where I fall because I don't know where it would take me, in all honesty. Yeah, it's difficult. I, I can't, I literally, I would love to say this, I'd love to say that, but I, I generally don't know what yeah, route I'd go with that. I think you get a better, better idea once you start adding more muscle onto the frame because you, you see a lot of pros, they're swapping classes and like they take that leap themselves and you see some of the classic physique guys and like, actually, I would, I would suit uh, two on two better. And, mm. you know, two on two, some people are like, oh, I'll suit two on two. <laughs> Two one two. Two twelve. <laughs> two one two. Two one twelve. Two one twelve. <laughs> when he said it, I was like, oh. Two hundred and twelve pounds. Yeah. Two hundred and twelve pounds. Weight. <laughs> Stage weight category of two hundred and twelve. <laughs> Sorry, carry on. You see all the pros swapping classes. Yeah, you carry on. Do, I think once you start adding muscle to to a frame. Um, it, it, it changes your physique and it changes what you thought. Like, I don't think people can truly estimate how their physique is going to turn out once they start adding muscle. Like, the, like some, some poses where it, you think, oh, well, I'm, that's going to be a shit pose for me forever. And you add a bit of muscle and you're like, wow, that's actually one of my strongest poses. Um, all it needs is just a bit more muscle on the frame. So I, I think... Uh, potentially, like even with yourself, George, you may you may um, make that change and make that big jump in adding some tissue to your frame and be like, wow, okay, maybe I do sit, suit this class or maybe I do suit that class. And you might sort of find your niche where where you fit more so further down the line, if that makes sense. Yeah, definitely. Um, and it was like this last year on prep when um, AJ told me when we first started, your, your glutes are your weakest body part. They're too small. Um, and then when I got peeled down, actually my glutes were probably one of my strongest areas in terms of in terms of my physique. And AJ told me, look, you're probably gonna we're probably gonna be aim for about 135, 130 pounds on stage. And I was thinking, now what have I got myself into here? But I, I went on stage about my lowest was 145, 148 between there. So it's it's very hard to dictate. You know, yes. I, I thought my weaknesses my weaknesses that I thought were my actual strong the stronger points and my stronger points. Well, actually, weaknesses um, in reality. So, yes, yeah, as you said, it's, it's really difficult to say until you yeah. start actually slabbing on the meat and then obviously dieting down and yeah. noticing those changes, uh, for sure. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, uh, have you any more questions, Nick? <laughs> what, based on the whole steroid thing? Yeah, I will, actually. I'm going to do, like, a really controversial one as well. And I suppose I'll give it to both of you guys because... Obviously, Jack, you're on cycle now, um, and then George, you're thinking about doing it. If somebody said to you that you are guaranteed Mr. Olympia, or whatever class you want to win, but you would need to do whatever it takes to win that, would you do it? Even if it meant reducing your lifespan by 10 years? Yes, I would. 100% uh, I, I would because I've said this saying I don't I mean as bad as this saying is I've said this terrible saying I'd rather live for I'd rather live like a tiger for 30 years than be a snail for 90 years um, yeah. I'd rather live I'd rather live for 30 years than 90 years because I, I I've, I've been to my nan's in retirement retirement home right now and um, I went to see I go see her here and there a few times and it makes you I don't know if you've ever been in retirement home, it makes you realize make the most of your life because these poor fuckers are just sleep, uh, like sleeping there stinking it's warm, really really warm they've got nothing to do they're just kind of waiting to almost just die and as, uh, as sad as that is it's the reality of things and i tell myself i don't want to be like that i want to make the most of my life and if that is you know taking things to the extreme then i don't mind taking 10 years off my life because i don't want to be spending the last 10 years in a retirement home forking out you know three grand a month just to wait for me to die that sort of thing and that might sound quite deep and horrible but that's that's me i'm, I'm that type of person i get that i get that i get yeah. that completely um my sort of perspective is i mean i, I suppose you could take that and it, it makes a lot of sense it really does um but a lot of people think the top is where you are where you'll be the happiest and a lot of people reach the top and they're like, wow, okay, this is not what I expected. And I'm trapped up here. 
and it's shit. You see, you see a lot of celebrities, whether, you, whether, uh, whether, whether it's a musician, whether it's an athlete, whether it's a film star, whatever they make, it's the top of the game. I mean, you look at you look at Mr. Olympia, um, look at how much hate they, they get. Um, and so, and some people, you know, may be okay with that. And some, uh, some people just might get there and be like, oh, this is horrible. I don't know how I would react with that. Um, but I've always said, when I when I um, started the cycle, and uh, when I started steroids in general, I don't want to die young for the sake of a bit of muscle. Um, I I do want to enhance my life, and I do want to, you know, with like George's point, I just I do want to live a good good life. And I don't want to make the most out of my years, but I don't want to cut it drastically short and cut out a lot of my years. So I think there's a happy medium between between the two. Because you, there is a certain age that where you could potentially just be waiting to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah you you may have outlived everyone, but like, what's what's the point if there's nothing worth living for? Mm. <laughs> that's 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 very deep. Life, I just realised as that was coming out my mouth. This is very deep. <laughs> Yeah, it is yeah. a little bit deep, to be perfectly honest, but it's a deep <laughs> question though, isn't it? I mean, yeah. if you were to um, Google the Goldman's Dilemma, this is basically the study that was, that was um, done on performance athletes and uh, bodybuilding athletes in general, and it was basically exactly that same question. And you'll be surprised at the amount of people who said that they would go to the nth degree to achieve that winner's spot, even if it did mean that they would die because of it. And um, it was a very interesting study, actually. And it, it just made me kind of think with what you were saying, that your goals were outweighing natural bodybuilding at that point. It's like, well, would you actually go to that nth degree and do whatever it takes to actually get that winning spot? And yeah, you probably would, um, which is obviously what you've just said there, because you don't want to live out like the last 10 years of your life, for example, in a retirement home or an old people's home. Um, but then again, saying that exact same thing, you could walk out of your house tomorrow and get hit by a bus. Absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, if you think about it like that, you might live fast, but you might die young. So it is, it is one of those things, but it's, it's a common trait that I'm seeing now in people where they, they say, yeah, yeah, I want to get onto cycle and I want to get into steroids and that kind of thing, but they don't actually know the, the real nth degree about what can happen in steroids. And there's only so much that you can learn off what was that site that we were talking about? Wikipedia podcasts and all the rest of it. You can't learn that much from it. Um, the, this is getting far too deep now about steroids. I want, I want to keep the subject. Um, but yeah, the Goldman's Dilemma. Have a Google of that. It's, it's a really interesting yeah, study if you ever want to have a, a look into it. And it, it's just about the psychology of steroids. And, yeah, you know, cause yeah. I, think, I think a lot of people who are assisted do throw away the health pointlessly. Like mm. I've seen people look shocking and they are assisted and they take such and such amount. It's probably a detriment to how they look as well. And um, like, yeah, they're very unhealthy as well. I, I do like, a lot of people do do that just because of how ignorant they are to what they're doing. Um, so there is that side of things. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. Makes you uh, think, doesn't it? Yeah, really. it does. Makes mm. you think. Does. One for the Makes listeners. Hope you're thinking, guys. <laughs> uh, <laughs> keep thinking, keep thinking. Right, okay, changing the subject then because I want something right. funny to be on here. Because okay. we're not a serious podcast. And you know so, um, yeah. Just to, just to bring you out to that depression that we've all put you in. Um, what? I, so recently you've, you've spoken about, because um, you're, you're a weed, you're an open weed smoker, um, yep. rubbish user. Um, and recently you've, said you've you've come off it what was the incentive behind that decision Resensitizing. Just, <laughs> just 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 one it's, ex it's an expensive hobby believe it or not yeah. like it really is like it does add up after a while um and not that wasn't the main reason but the first main reason is i once i start relying on something to kind of get me through the day then i know like this is this is not good this is really not good and uh Every night I was relying, not relying it for sleep, but I knew if I smoked one before I went to bed, I would have the munchies. I'd have a big bowl of oats, 
nice bit of chocolate in there, have a cookie on the side, it'd have been gone in five minutes and I would have literally passed out with my bowl and my, my spoon on my chest and I would have woke up next morning going, what the fuck has gone on, sort of thing. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then, then I actually had one day without smoking and I was thinking, how am I actually going to get to sleep tonight? Like I've been relying on this drug to make me fall asleep every single night. I'm not sure whether I'm actually going to be able to sleep tonight. And luckily I did have a good night's sleep. And I was like, I woke up next day and I just felt different. I just felt, wow, I haven't felt this refreshed in a long while. I'm not saying I, I did feel refreshed when smoking cannabis, but I got to the point of where it just made me feel really groggy in the mornings. Like I've been through, you know, when you've woken up and you're like, wow, what has gone on? Like I feel an absolute mess sort of thing. Um, it just made me feel horrendous and I just got really lazy on it and I couldn't be bothered to do anything. Um, but I had to stop because I, I, I'm, I'm that type of person that once I start relying on, for example, even if it's like pre-workouts, I get to a point, I think, yeah. hang on, I'm, I'm relying on this too much just to get me through sessions. Um, and then I stop and I, I'm fine. I'm back to normal. So yeah, if I'm relying on something like that, just to kind of make me have a good night's sleep and all that type of stuff, it's, it's not providing a benefit for me. It's more of like uh, an addiction and I yeah. don't want to get addicted to things like that. Yeah. So, um, don't get me wrong, I, I smoke here and there now. I don't smoke every single day like I used to. Um, but when I did finish, it was quite hard, especially in the first week, because I my appetite went downhill. I had a terrible appetite for the, for the next couple of days. And I Googled like, the symptoms of coming off cannabis and appetite drop is, is one thing. And horrendous dreams. Horrendous yeah. dreams. I was going to say, how like, many dreams? Woke up like the next day, I've had like three dreams in the space of an hour. I'm going, what is going on? Were these real? Were these not? I still get them now. And I haven't smoked in a good two weeks or so. Um, so I'm glad that I stopped because it was getting to a point, of, like I said, where, I mean, I, I just relying on it. And it's just not healthy having that uh, when you're relying on that type of stuff. And don't get me wrong, it provides a benefit, makes me feel happy, makes me feel relaxed, calm. I have a good laugh on it. I, you know, get... I start thinking about YouTube videos. I can think about content for Instagram. I get crazy, crazy visions and thoughts, but it's just, yeah, it's not, it's not healthy for me like that. No. Did yeah. you find no. that you turned into a little bit of an insomniac then at that point with mm. the crazy dreams, waking up in the middle of the night and overthinking? Yeah. Yeah. Literally mm. it, it would, it's quite, sometimes it's quite like, like, wow, like you really sit there and you, you know, when you just wake up, you don't know where you are. It takes like a good, 10 seconds to kind of realize where you are and then you kind of fall back to sleep me it was like wow like this is not right it really isn't right yeah um and like i think i think we were just relying on it like that night where i didn't smoke and i was so used to smoking for two three months i was actually thinking how am i going to sleep tonight and i've never ever thought about that before i've just kind mm -hmm. of just gone to bed and just fell asleep sort of thing yeah naturally but that night where i was like i'm so used to having a little spliff before going to bed how, how am i going to sleep uh, yeah it's just not good in my view when it when it comes to that point Mm. emotional yeah. attachment to something we were talking oh. about this the other day weren't we jack about um people taking time off the gym and not wanting to do that because it's just an emotional attachment to the gym yeah and it's yeah. the same, the same thing with yourself well, i think george gets the nail on the head is like when when you realize you're relying on something when you don't necessarily need to it can be it's, it's an addiction and like, I'm, I'm the exact same. If I notice I'm relying on something, I'm like, right, okay, this has to stop. Yeah. This has to stop. Absolutely. Right. Don't say like... that, though, because you're relying on me as a training partner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I've, I've, I've stopped it this week. I know, but you yeah. proved that it was really bad. <laughs> if anybody didn't catch up with Jack's stories, um, I obviously let him down on his deadlifts and he was like, what am I going to do in order to get this motivation now that Vic is not behind me saying, you've got to get this deadlift and one more rep and everything. So he decided to take like four scoops of pre-workout. <laughs> and, and that was bad, wasn't it? I was asking myself the same question, George. How am I going to sleep tonight? <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> we've all had those ones where you're laying in bed buzzing off a pre-workout because you took it at six o'clock in the evening and you know why you've done it and you're sitting there going Fucking, what have i just done buzzing off my tits in bed at Bro. 10 o'clock at night <laughs> yeah I'm, <laughs> I'm not joking i i was sweating today i can still feel the the tingle oh wow. today today i was in i was in tesco i was like oh it's a bit hot in here i'm getting the pre-workout tingle i was like i've been deeply affected by what i've taken yesterday <laughs> <laughs> 
actually hit your soul. Your soul oh, yeah, was the one you had looking that day. Oh, weird. I, I'm surprised I didn't start gaining in the gym. I just, <laughs> I was dripping with sweat in the middle of training. Oh, it was amazing. Bad. <laughs> well, and then let's have, a, let's have a little bit of a laughing point about that. So that's obviously a little mistake that you have learned from. George, what is one of the biggest mistakes that you did on prep that you have learned from? Um, oh, there's a few. Oh, um, Funny one. one. One of my biggest mistakes is adding a kilo of water into my oats. That was a disastrous <laughs> move. I, used, I, I weighed out 1,000 grams of water in my oats just to... And then I added, as well, Jack, I added baking soda to it as well. Um, and obviously, if you use baking soda, it expands. Um, yeah. So I would have, my bowl used to be like like this, but it was, it was huge. That doesn't, but I used to sit there and I used to get bloated as fuck after it, but just be well, fine. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm full, but I, I look back now and I think, I don't even know. I actually weighed out the other day to see how many grams of water I have in my oats. I have like 400 now, if that. Yeah. I have barely anything. It's so crazy, isn't it? It's so crazy. Yeah. Like, I, I used to eat out of this, this bowl. And I used to fill mm. the water right up to the edge, put it in the microwave for 15 minutes, right? Just 15 minutes straight. And it still wasn't done. Stir it, put it in for a few more minutes. My units would take me an hour to eat. It, just because I added that much water in them. I, it's mm. crazy what food focus does. Because you look back and you're like, wow, you're a dickhead. <laughs> like, you just do stupid stuff, you know, because for the sake of like, ooh, satiety, satiety. But yeah. you realize like your stomach's like this out. That was yeah. <laughs> like I started on the the baking soda as well. Like I, I saw your YouTube video. I was like, All right, that's a good idea. I was still deep in prep at this point. I was like, yeah, I'll add it in. I'll add it in. It does work. Nice. It does work. It really does well. Well, it might work, yeah, but talk about gastrointestinal distress for like <laughs> days afterwards. My <laughs> god, I know. I remember just like getting the syrups, and I was just like, Oh, yes, those syrups, man, Jesus, they are bad. The, the ones we're talking about are like the zero calories, zero sugar, zero anything in them, and they're just a boatload of sodium. They're That's basically horrible after prep. Ah, oh, they should be branded chemical shitstorm. That's basically what they should be branded. And they give you, they destroy your natural gut flora and natural gut bacteria. So anybody who, and I'm not being funny, but I have been around people who have lived on those things and they stink. They stink bad. So if you want to put that kind of shit on your oats, be prepared to stink like a farmyard for the next like two days. Um, because quite honestly, you are rotting from the inside out, <laughs> literally, <laughs> and your body just wants to expel it. But yeah, okay, so all that was quite. Are, to be fair, eh? I think all bodybuilders are rotting from the inside out. <laughs> oh, I know, right? The protein farts. Did yeah, you guys I don't know have a bodybuilder that's farting daisies? I'll tell you that. No, they're not a true <laughs> bodybuilder. They just yeah. aren't. Yeah. And you know what the worst case is? One of my biggest mistakes in prep is actually going on the Stairmaster next to prepping bodybuilders. That's terrible. Because even with tricep pushdowns, they're right by the cables and the way that the Stairmaster is, like the cables are here and the Stairmaster's there and I'm on the Stairmaster doing my half an hour that I need to do. And then a guy is deep in prep or what have you, or even like, he probably wasn't, he's probably off season eating all of the protein that's completely unnecessary. But tricep pushdowns, drops his guts and walks away. I'm trapped. I'm trapped on the Stairmaster <laughs> with, this, with this smell that's emanating and lifting above. And I'm just like, I have 12 minutes left. I have to get it done. So yeah, that is a- um, was a bit like the set we did at um, Strength when like we were on this machine that was directly facing the toilet. This big oh my grandma God. walks out and I swear to God, I was hit with the most horrendous smile in the middle of my set. I couldn't stop it. Like, you weren't on the set. You weren't on the set. It was me on the you set. Do. Yeah, because you shut the door. Another time I was choking off some shit. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it was Couple so bad. I was doing my, my flies and stuff. And Jack just, he comes out and Jack just like shuts the door. And I only had three yeah. reps left. I'm sure I had another two, but I had to get out of it. I literally <laughs> got out of the machine, didn't I? And I was like, ah, wow. <laughs> I'm not saying wow over the set either. <laughs> it was horrendous. It was horrendous. But 
Yeah. All right, moving away from toilet humor then. Um, <laughs> and another question, because I just think it's going to be funny and I'm staring at a whole pile of toys here now. What was your favorite board game as a kid? And if we were all sat around a table now, what board game would you play now? Question. Uh, I would play, is it called Don't Wake Dad? Oh, right. <laughs> no way, Dad. You have to basically click the thing, um, the alarm clock, and it'd sit up. I don't know why that came into my head. Like, don't wake Dad, because I used to really love that. It used to scare me like nobody's was when he used to get up. No idea. <laughs> I don't know if anyone's ever played it, but that, that's the one I used to play when I was young. I remember the adverts. Don't wake Dad. Yeah. <laughs> <Don't> wake Dad. <laughs> Terrible game. I would never play that now. I'd never play a board game. Um, but yeah, Why that's, that's, that's the one. interesting. That's an interesting thing for you to say. Why would you never play a board game? Yeah, it just doesn't. Yeah, I don't know. I just feel like I can spend my time wiser. Like, uh, like you said, play either playing PS4, even though I rarely ever do that, or watching YouTube videos or something like that. I don't. Any time we play board games at Christmas, the family actually sit down, but we don't do it any other time in the year. It's quite crazy when you think about it. Yeah. Um, it's just. I think right now it's kind of old fashioned. I think. I think as humans and the planet's evolved and, you know, we'd all rather sit on our phones than sit around the table and play card games or Scrabble or shit like that, you know. Um, just, yeah, I don't know, that's not my type of thing. I don't really want to do that. I'd rather yeah. do something productive, go for a walk or something, have a chat or, I don't know, some, some shit like that, probably. <laughs> what about you, Jack? What game would you play? What game? Um, maybe... Maybe Monopoly, I think. I think Classic. I know, that's where you see who your true friends are. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it does. It divides families, that game. It divides people. Yeah, yeah. If you get true friends. <laughs> like, last time I played with Monopoly, I couldn't, I couldn't get through it because the person I was playing with was cheating. Oh, do you know? I hate those things. I thought it's like, you're not going to play properly. Don't cheat. Don't cheat. I'm just cheating I myself. I know, I know, I know. They were the banker. That's the thing. Never trust the banker who's playing. <laughs> yeah, they keep on nicking money off the top. No, no, no. It's just well, I have to say, I think I'm going to invite you guys round to play a game of Shaboom. 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 It is absolutely incredible. And even though you're saying, um, I mean, I know you don't have kids, George. Obviously, that's the reason why you're saying that it's really old fashioned and that kind of thing. <laughs> Me and the kids, yeah. we sit down and we play board games quite a lot. And um, I mean, Shaboom isn't a board game. It's actually quite hilarious. You, you've just got, you know, you've got these cards that you tip over and it says the first one to um, throw, I don't know, four white pieces into a domino box or something is the one that has to then slam the table and say shaboom. And it's just like a whole crazy frenzy type thing. And then you have like little elements where it's like, right, like you've got to put your face down onto the table whilst doing that thing. And it's really funny. Um, but yeah, I think when you were saying that the only time we do it is at Christmas time, and that's when the family actually sit down together and they play a game, and that's when you all sit around a table. And that, I mean, do you really sit down? Do you enjoy that when that happens? Do you actually think, yeah. oh, this is actually really nice to spend time with the family? Yeah, that's what I was literally about going to literally about to say. I say um, I was going to, you know, just enjoy. It. I actually enjoy those moments, but it just happens just at Christmas time, believe it or not, which is strange. Yeah. We really should do more of that, but we just don't seem to okay. do anything like that. I think that's right. what we say to ourselves, like, right, we're allowed to have this day off. Mm. We're allowed to not think about anything other than just spending time with family. Like, that's the day we dedicate to that, um, like, it's tradition. But you, there's no other day in the year where you can really do that. Do you know what I mean? I agree. Mm. I agree. Mm. Um, I do find it really important and I try and hammer that home with my clients um, online when they're saying, oh, I'm just so stressed and I've got this and I've got that and I've got the other. And it's like, do you know what? Just take 20 minutes out of your day and either spend it with somebody that you love or spend it doing something that you really enjoy doing. And me and the kids, I mean, and, and my husband, obviously, we just sit around and we play a game and we can play this so stupid games that you can play. It's like there's one called the sock game. That's just a really long sock filled with shit. And you spin a little dial and it says, right, try and find the ping pong ball. And you pick it out and it's not a ping pong ball, it's a rubber ball. It's like, fuck's sake. So, you know, you've got to go back into the sock and do it. But it's, it's a really fun time where you can just kind of say, you know what, I've actually just spent 20 minutes with my family rather than being lost in social media or lost in PS4. And I mean, let's let's think about it. Your PS4 game, it's quite lonely unless you have that headset and you're talking to... Multiplayer. <laughs> what was that? Multiplayer. Multiplayer. Yeah. 
<laughs> you know what? I can't do it. I'm crap at games like that. This is why I you board get games. Get games <laughs> off of Fortnite and uh, get or, or PUBG and get a chicken dinner. No there. idea what you just said. <laughs> but yeah, okay. <laughs> I mean, my little lad plays Fortnite and he's got this like this headset and you just hear him and like, you have no idea what he's saying, but he just makes a lot of noises and then just kind of goes, yeah, this one's hard. This one's easy. No, Aaron, don't. Oh, never mind. It's like, what the hell happened? And like, three seconds. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, he does all of that. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. I like that. <laughs> That's pretty good, by the way. <laughs> you know we're doing that in the gym next player. <laughs> right anyway right jack come on ask another question i've done my funny question oh shit um i think it's time it's time it's for the q and a's go on then um have you got any q and a because i have, I have one q and a that we've done to death um which was basically what's your viewpoint on um full body splits five times a week We've answered this question that many times, but you can answer it from your point of view if you would like to, George. Um, what was the question? Full body spins five days a week? Yeah. Five times? Oh, Christ. Uh, no, <laughs> I would not do that. I just wouldn't be able to recover. Simple as that. Um, no. That <laughs> I'll keep it nice and short. Very Unless you're doing like volume. half a set. Each, yeah. each <laughs> fucking uh, body part, just do half a set. <laughs> Literally. That's it. <laughs> Yeah, One straightforward. Do not do it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna ask this one first. Who's your who's your favorite Instagram icon? Instagram icon. Oh, uh, oh God, Instagram icon. Who do I? Follow? I'm trying to think about who I follow now. Um, three, most of my stuff, yeah, is just literally bodybuilding related. It's just literally, it's nothing outside of that. Uh, I think I'm a big fan of who I follow quite a lot recently. It's probably John Jewett. Big fan of John. I look up to him quite a lot in terms of just how he analyzes his training, his just like, for example, measurements, that type of stuff. I've been really into that lately. I don't know why. It just intrigues me mm. because I don't see a lot of pro bodybuilders going to as much detail as him in regards to whether it's drugs, whether it's food. Yeah. It's just a typical, what we see with Ivory Pro bodybuilders, it's just a case of they just t tell you just load of shit that we already know, or it's just, they're just hiding the fact that they don't, you know, take drugs and stuff, uh, all that stuff, which we already know they do. They just don't talk about it. But John's a very open person who's willing to talk about absolutely anything. I think that's quite insightful because it makes you realize what it, it takes to be at that level. Because yeah. everything is quite easy and quite straightforward. You don't need a lot of drugs, but if, in reality, you do, sort of thing. Um, I yeah. don't want to talk about drugs anymore, but John's very insightful. I do look up to him um, from a bodybuilding standpoint. Outside of bodybuilding, I would probably go for right now, I'd probably go for KSI. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason why I follow KSI, I'm a big fan of, of KSI, is because he has made it. Whether that's in music, whether that's YouTube, whether that's being right. a content creator, whatever it may be. That guy, despite obviously, it's like it's like Logan Paul and Jake Paul. They're both twats, but they are successful as fuck. And um, I look up to I look up to them in terms of how they do things and how they've got to where they are. Um, even though I don't like them, they are successful either way. You can't take that away from them. Um, so yeah, I don't know. KSI is one of the people that I follow quite regular. Like as soon as he uploads a video on YouTube, I'm watching it. Any posts, I'll like it, that type of stuff. Um, yeah, yeah. Is, he yeah. is your is he your favorite YouTuber? He's the one that I've been watching for the long like when I first ever watched you, I've been watching him since he was like playing FIFA in his in his bedroom. Yeah. Um, and I've just somehow followed him from there um, to where he is now, obviously, where he's you know a multi millionaire, whatever he is. So um, yeah, KSI is just I don't know why I just followed him. I've watched pretty much all his videos. Um, even if they're shit, I just watch it for background noise sometimes. I'm thinking, fucking hell, like, I'm just watching this and uh, I'm like 20 minutes deep into it or whatever it may be. <laughs> so, yeah. No idea why KSI, but it's just KSI has came to my head. Yeah, yeah. It's the same, really. I, I enjoy following him. And he has made yeah. it. He's made it. He's killed it in everything. Yeah, absolutely. 
Yeah, yeah. Wherever field he, he talks he, he talks the talk, you know. He, wherever wherever he says he he's actually proven it. Like whether that's boxing, things like that. He said, you know, he's gonna beat Logan Paul, he's done it. <laughs> you know, beat Joe Weller, he's he does what he says and I respect him for that. Don't don't get me wrong, I think it will bite him on the arse one day. But so far it hasn't and he's doing very well from it. So fair play to him, that's what I say. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Okay. It's motivation to me for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, well, everyone subscribe to KSI. <laughs> and subscribe to me while you're at, so I can try and get a million. <laughs> Nowhere near it, but. <laughs> All right, what's your next video going to be on YouTube and why? Oh, Christ. Uh, so I'm obviously going up to going up to AJ, so I'm obviously going to record some content then. Um, I've got probably a video coming out tomorrow. Uh, I went out for some food yesterday. Went for a Pepe's, got some dessert, trained, got my hair cut. Showing how people get my, how I get my hair cut. Stuff people love that stuff. Believe it. You might be sitting there going, "You don't give a shit about your haircut." But people, <laughs> people messaged me saying, "George, can you tell me what haircut you get so I can show my barber?" I'm like, "Yeah, sure." It's this high skin fade, and you know, I get a little trim on the top. Weird stuff like that can you know change someone's like day, make it better, and stuff like that. It's, yeah. it's crazy. Um, I still don't like sit here and think, why do people watch me swearing all the time with my foul mouth and just showcasing my life and stuff like that? But people somehow like, you're inspirational. You know, I love your videos. I've been subscribed since day one. I'm thinking, over a haircut? Really? <laughs> really? really? No offense, mate. It's you a nice really want to watch? Yeah. Mm. I, don't, I, don't, I don't get it. I still don't get it to this day. I still don't get why people would watch my videos but then again I'm sitting here watching other YouTubers and they probably think the same yeah um, yeah. But yeah just just being me being a twat and talking shit like I always do and try and as well as I like to provide value but I also want to be that person as well who I don't know why I'm even speaking about this but I just want you know if you had a really shit day at work and I just want to cheer you up whether that's something I put on Instagram that is funny like the last couple of posts I've put up on Instagram of of, of my leg shaking on in, uh, on the leg press I don't know if anyone saw that, but that got like over 150 shares, something like that. And people were commenting and just sharing stuff from like TikTok or even the Yorkshire pudding in my dog, uh, and my, my dog put in my gym bag earlier. And I shared it online <laughs> and that's got like 40 bloody shares. Just people, if I can cheer someone up and make their day better, then that, that that's perfect. I'd love to do that. Whether it's me just waffling or, or, or taking or making a joke or just being relatable. Because mm. I think I think one of my biggest things is definitely people can relate. Just because I've got a bit of a following, which is nothing crazy, doesn't mean I'm I'm different to to everyone else. You know, I'm, I'm still the same, George. I still go through shit, still take shits every day, um, and yeah, that, people automatically think just because you have a following doesn't mean your life is completely different. It really isn't. It's just the same as everyone else's. Unfortunately, I just showcase it more than what others would potentially. Sometimes it bites me on the ass, but that's who I am sort of thing, you know, I don't know how I've got on to talking about that, but <laughs> you kind of get the point. I do. I get that the is, point. It is quite interesting. <laughs> what, mm. what advice would you, would you give to someone looking to grow their YouTube or, or just their following in general? It's all about show. It's all about posting, post, post, post. The more you can share, the more opportunities your posts or your videos are going to be seen. Um, you're up alone once a week. That's, you know, how many times is that? what in fit that's 52 chances for your video to be seen if you're uploading you know three, 365 days wherever it is in a year you, you have you know that many times to someone see your video so just keep plugging away keep showcasing your journey and people will eventually invest the hardest thing is, is starting um too many people will, will for example put a video up and it'll get like 90 views and most of it is your friends and your mum and your dad might have a little look, that type of stuff. And you're sitting there going, I put all that effort in for 90 bloody views. So I'm thinking, is it really worth it? But then you just got to kind of fight through those loads because what's going to set you aside is normally people would just quit um, when they get like 10 views on a video. But then you'll start, actually, it starts building up and it's very slow. Like your first 100 subscribers are the slowest 100 subscribers you will ever, ever get. Um, same again with Instagram. The first 100 followers are very, very slow. Uh, but once you start getting into a routine of posting, once you start, you know, showcasing this, showcasing that, engaging with your audience as well, what would you like to see, that type of stuff, more people keep coming back. Um, and it's just 
being consistent with it you have to be consistent that's my best advice with uh with social media youtube I'm not a, any i'm not big or popular on youtube or instagram at all but from where i've got to in the past couple of years it's through showcasing what i do and, and being different and just being patient and just keep uploading whether it's the same shit whether it's something different when the opportunities come up just do it like there's moments where i sit down going do i really have to record mrs puts a camera in my face i'm thinking i can't be fucked to speak to the camera but i do i do and that then again that's content you know even when it's like you know eating food and stuff like that people are intrigued people love it and sometimes i sit there as well watching youtube i think i'm actually really enjoying this geezer just sit here and you know eat his food and talk about crap and you're, you're absolutely loving it and i'm thinking wow it's 20 minutes deep and i'm still watching this video i'm going to subscribe to this bloke um so yeah that's i hope that answers that type of question yeah. or that style of question yeah any questions Vic? any questions of the uh off the ground off the gram no they're all bloody boring ones we've got ones like you know hi hey oh, those ones. follow for follow with that lately fucking hate that and i, do I don't get well. it do you comment on my last Instagram post? Yeah, you're a dick. <laughs> that's nice. <laughs> okay. Um, no, that's fair enough then. Well, I mean, we are coming up on time anyway, because it's just about hitting that hour mark, isn't it? Um, so I suppose we can leave it with um, something on the... Should we leave it on a funny one or should we leave it on a serious one? This has been quite a serious, deep podcast, actually, which I'm surprised at, really? to be perfectly honest. <laughs> I've enjoyed yeah. this one a lot. I mean, so a lot of people think I'm, I mean, sorry to relate this back to me, but a lot of people think I am jokey, jokey all the time. And I do love, you know, I do love a joke and I have a good laugh, but there is a serious side to me as well. And there's, I have a lot of feelings, a lot of emotions and stuff like that. And we all have that. Um, and sometimes it's really nice to kind of, instead of typically people asking, what do you do, where you're from, training, it's nice to actually talk about something different that I'm into as well, whether that's, you know, playing games or smoking bud or whatever it may be um i, I like that different I, I don't like listening to podcasts that you know are, are the same stuff like when i see aj on a podcast i have to skip the first 20 minutes because i know his background we all know what he's into you know go-karting or motorsports and stuff like that everyone knows that <laughs> and most of the questions are always the same but i want you know a podcast to be actually i didn't know about that i didn't know about this it's quite interesting yeah sort of thing. i like that i don't like it being all gym related and you know where you've competed and stuff like because most people know like what i've done most people know that type of stuff i like getting into other areas of of life well that's good. it and that's it. the reason why me and jack were talking about these kind of things on podcasts and we're not like we don't like having a full-on serious podcast because there's so many out there you just need a break from them so you know talk about games talk about favorite hoodies talk about favorite ice cream flavors you know it's so much nicer about that or you're yeah, dog leaving some no stuff in the back um right okay so i am going to sign off and say peace and love and god bless and all the rest of it so thank you thank you very much for coming on for the love of oats and for the love of jack love you i'll catch up with you again <laughs> anything to leave on jack apart from the bicep um a <laughs> double bicep <laughs> <laughs> that was the douchiest thing i've ever done it was massive yeah. douche massive douche and the extra smooth yeah. top um i just want to say myself thank you for having me on um i don't thank you for coming on man. Podcast. it's been an absolute um, pleasure it's, it's been nice. an absolute it's pleasure nice. having you and it's nice to have a chat yeah absolutely absolutely we could do this again yeah absolutely absolutely um, I we might be smoking one next time <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> no i don't want to be a bad influencer <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> So for the people that are listening, um, I, a lot of people have requested this to be on iTunes, so I will get this on iTunes. I'm going to say it on the podcast, so I have to put it on iTunes. That is me giving myself the incentive to put it on, because if I upload this to YouTube and people are like, oh, you said it's going to be on iTunes, then uh, I'll look like a dick. So um, <laughs> yeah, so thank you for tuning in, everyone. If you've liked this, um, like it. Subscribe if you haven't already. Comment what you would like to see. And I will catch you guys later. Peace and love, everybody. Bye. Bye.